Welcome to DP Tutorials. In this tutorial, let us see how to create multiple dependent drop-down lists up to three levels in Excel. For example, let's say you are dealing with categories, subcategories and items, each in their respective columns where I want to have the drop-down list to be configured. In this setting sheet, I have the list of categories and the subcategories which are dependent on categories and then I have the list of items which are further dependent on subcategories. So you have to arrange your data like this in this manner. First, what we need to do is naming the ranges for our convenience. Select the range of cells under category A3 to A6, go to formulas tab and in the define names group, click on create from selection. Here, select the top row as a name and click OK. Now this range of cells has been named as category. You can check the same by clicking the name manager. Similarly, select the range of all subcategories under each category name and name the ranges like this by selecting the top row as the header. Okay. So these will be the names. Now, once you're done with naming the ranges, go to the main sheet. Select the cell where you want the first drop-down list. Go to Data, then Data Validation. Choose List as your validation criteria and select your category column range as the source. Or simply, you can mention the name that we have given for this range which is Category. This becomes your first level drop-down list. For the second level, Select the cell next to the first drop-down list. Again go to Data, then Data Validation. Choose List and use the indirect function to dynamically refer to the corresponding subcategory column based on the selected category. So I type here as equals to indirect. Open the parentheses. Type the cell A4. Only lock it on the left side. Close the parentheses. Okay. Now for the third level, select the cell next to the second drop-down list. Repeat the process, but this time use the indirect function to refer to the corresponding items column based on the selected subcategory. So I type here as equals to indirect, open the parentheses, select the cell B4, close the parentheses and lock it only on to the left side and then click OK. Now it's done. Let's test the drop-down list. In cell A4, I select category from drop-down as electronics. And in cell B4, I see only phones and laptops as the subcategories in the drop-down. Select laptops. In cell C4, I see MacBook, Dell, HP as the options to select. Got it? In this video, you will learn how to enhance your Excel drop-down list by adding conditions. Follow our step-by-step -step tutorial to master this valuable Excel skill and improve your data management and analysis. Consider this as an example. Select the cell where you want your primary drop-down list to appear. Then go to the Data tab, select the Data Validation and choose List as the validation criteria. In the source box, enter the range of cells containing your primary criteria options, which is B3 to E3. Click OK to create the drop-down list. Now let's create the conditional drop-down list. Select the cell where you want your conditional drop-down list to appear. Again go to data validation and choose list as the validation criteria. However, this time you will use a formula in this source box. Use the indirect function to reference the primary selection like this. Now using the name manager, we need to define the names for the regions like this. Select the entire data range. Go to formulas tab. Click on create from selection. Select top row in this dialog box. You will notice that the person names have been defined names as regions like this. Now let's test. By selecting different options from the primary list, 
you will observe how the conditional drop down list updates dynamically based on your selection. You can further refine your condition based drop down list by adding additional criteria and dependent options. Simply repeat the mentioned steps. To make your spreadsheet more user friendly, you can format and customize the drop down list, including adjusting fonts, colors, and cell styles. Got it? You will learn how to make your Excel drop down list more visually appealing and informative by adding colors. If I have to plot the red, amber, green status for all the projects, instead of coloring each cell manually, I can add the drop downs and then apply conditional formatting. Let's try it out now. First, let me remove all these manually applied colors. Step 1 is to add the drop down. Select the data range C4 to H13. Go to the data tab, click on data validation and choose list as the validation criteria and in the source box enter the range of cells containing your primary criteria colors which is K3 to K5. Click OK to create the drop down list. Once this is done, let's apply conditional formatting for these cells. Select the range C4 to H13, go to home tab, click on conditional formatting and choose new rule. In the new formatting rule dialog, select use a formula to determine which cells to format. Type the formula as equals to C4 equals to red. Click on format and fill with red color and font color as red. Click OK and click OK again. Similarly, repeat the process for adding for amber and green colors. Once you're done, let's test this now. Go to any cell and from drop down, select the color and you will notice that the same color has been filled for the cell. So now you can simply select the colors from drop down to fill the cells. Got it? So you have learned how to add color to your drop down list in Excel, making your spreadsheets more visually informative and user friendly. Color coding can help you categorize and prioritize your data, making it easier to work with and understand. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues and subscribe for more Excel tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.